Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second webinar in Intel's Tiered Memory is Here series on Bright Talk, Inside Memory Tiering with Intel and VMware, a deeper dive. We're going to be exploring how VMware is making it possible to utilize memory tiering and how organizations can take advantage of that functionality. I'm your host, John Burke, CTO at Nemertis, and today I'm joined by Drew Peterson, Global Sales Manager, Intel Memory and Storage Technologies, Sudhir Balasubramanian, Senior Staff Solution Architect and Global Oracle Field Practice Lead at VMware, and Arvind Jagannath, Product Management Lead at VMware. Everybody, thank you so much for being with us today. Let's get started. And Drew, we're going to start with you. You and I did the first webinar together. Let's start by recapping what's going on in the industry from a memory and infrastructure point of view, how tiered memory fits into that. What are you seeing? Yeah, great to be with you again, John. I'm really excited that we brought our friends at VMware into the conversation because they're such a key part of this story. Uh, to recap, uh, episode one from last time, really we talked about what's going on in the industry, right? The creation of lots and lots of data, artificial intelligence, analytics, in-memory databases, really consuming almost an infinite amount of, of data and creating great opportunities to, to gain insights. What we talked about our customers experiencing really is this perfect storm where they're being asked to do a lot more because, because of all these new use cases. A lot of time budgets are tight. And so they're trying to figure out how to do all this in an inflationary environment where everything's a little bit more expensive than it used to be. And so really this is creating an opportunity or even a requirement to do things a little, a little bit differently. One of the big areas that every customer can benefit from is this newer concept of tiering memory, the same way they've been tiering storage for decades. And really it's with our partners here in VMware that have made this a reality by taking advantage of some of the capabilities that we put into the Intel hardware and giving customers really that experience to be able to run more virtual machines, more workloads uh, seamlessly. And they've even got a, a very exciting roadmap of future innovations that they have stacked. So I'm excited to hear more from Arvin and Sadir uh, in this episode. Indeed. And Arvin, we're going to toss the ball to you first. Uh, before we dive specifically into tiered memory, how do Intel and VMware work together? Uh, oh, Intel is uh, one of the premier partners for uh, VMware. We have worked very closely over the last 15 to 20 years. Uh, we, uh, Intel, as we all probably know, that it's a leader in the semiconductor industry. Uh, VMware is uh, the leader in virtualization, and uh, it's uh, it definitely helps uh, customers across uh, the world, uh, including Fortune 500 customers, consolidate and improve utilization on their servers. Uh, so in terms of uh, the history, VMware and Intel have a long um, collaboration history of uh, various technologies. Uh, we have worked on literally every CPU uh, family and generation, enabling them for uh, various OEM server vendors. Uh, we also work on several features uh, within the CPU and also uh, things such as security and uh, acceleration technologies and networking and storage uh, offloads and accelerations. Uh, of course, some of the newer uh, innovations like on the GPU front and uh, IPU, uh, which is a smart NIC uh, front, uh, we have been collaborating on a lot of different streams. And uh, uh, VMware um, uh, vSphere is basically ideally suited uh, to provide infrastructure innovations uh, very rapidly because uh, it sort of avoids all the lift and shift with uh, uh, traditional OSs, and uh, it provides a virtualization layer. Uh, basically, it has more visibility and control onto the uh, as far as the hardware resources go, and uh, thus vSphere can provide uh, sort of the most ideal conditions uh, to make use of the hardware, better utilize the hardware, and uh, sort of balance uh, them across the workloads using uh, a single pane of glass management. Uh, with Intel, we also recently started collaborating um, as uh, as recently as last year on Project Capitola, and uh, we'll talk more about it. It's it's a new software tiering mechanism which we uh, announced at VMworld last year, 
And uh, at this point, uh, we are well on our way to doing a GA, um, uh, the beginning of calendar year uh, uh, 2023. And uh, we are also working closely with uh, Intel on all the CPU generations where this can be enabled. And uh, we are using the Intel Optane persistent memory technology uh, as um, our first pass for Project Capitola. Oh, fascinating. So bringing up tiered memory, what is VMware doing with tiered memory? Uh, what kinds of features have evolved to take advantage of it? Yeah, definitely. So Intel and uh, VMware um, is specifically on tiered, uh, specifically on the Intel Optane persistent memory. We have been working uh, with Intel over the last five years. And uh, uh, Optane persistent memory sort of provides a really good balance between DRAM and uh, uh, NVMe, for example. Um, with uh, We did actually release, uh, we have been uh, going in a continuous train of uh, various innovations that we are doing, including support the, supporting the various generation of uh, persistent memory technologies from Intel, each relevant for uh, a new platform from Intel. Uh, so 6.5 uh, was the vSphere release when we actually initially announced the DCPMM uh, capability. And um, in 2018, with uh, 6.7 vSphere release, uh, we introduced uh, both you know, block addressable storage as well as byte addressable, uh, plus all the uh, Intel modes that we are familiar with, such as the Intel memory mode and uh, uh, using hardware-based tiering and the AppDirect mode. Uh, where applications such as SAP uh, can make use of uh, uh, some of the PMM capabilities um, uh, to, to their benefits. So definitely adds value to our customers in terms of cost, performance, scale, and uh, including downtime and uh, boot up time, etc. Um, but at the same time, uh, we are also seeing that uh, this is greatly helping with uh, um, reducing some of the um, real-time requirements and also helping with uh, the cost for for a large number of customers. Um, in VMware has also collaborated uh, closely with Intel with um, enabling some of the ISVs uh, such as you know SAP uh, on the VPMM with AppDirect where SAP has gone ahead and made some changes to their applications. Um, and uh, the most recent uh, change with 7.0 U3 vSphere release has been VMMR, which is the uh, uh, vSphere memory monitoring and remediation. Uh, this basically provides a bunch of statistics uh, for which we closely worked with Intel again uh, to implement some of the fine-grained statistics from the hardware where we can um, sort of uh, bring uh, both VM and host level monitoring capabilities um, across the different memory tiers, uh, things such as miss rates and bandwidth consumption. So, so you can uh, you can tell folks in the console exactly how much of each tier of memory different workloads running as VMs uh, are consuming. Yes, absolutely. So in in uh, terms of um, 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 both Capitola as well as App Direct modes, we we can exactly say what kind of uh, consumption is happening. Um, but uh, not only that, we can also say what kind of statistics um, uh, are being um, exposed right now. Such as you know, for example, um, in real time, uh, how the applications are utilizing these um, uh, various tiers. Uh, bandwidth usage, for example, is real uh, is a real time statistic, and that can be exposed as well with VMMR. Drew, is this the kind of thing that uh, Intel specifically has in mind as it goes about uh, providing the new feature sets for things uh, like Optane? Yeah, I think that's what's so great about our partnership with VMware in this space because they're truly taking advantage of every possible way to use the technology. And so I think of it as no matter what you're doing, you're really tiering memory. It's just how you want to tier it, right? So right now, uh, most of the customers that I work with are taking advantage of doing that tiering in hardware, which has the benefit that it's completely transparent to applications. 
everything's going to run exactly the, the way that you're used to. And a lot of people have legacy uh, applications in their environment that haven't been updated for this type of technology. And then VMware also supports uh, what Arvin mentioned, which is letting the application itself uh, do the tiering, which is something like SAP HANA puts the memory in the, the right spot based on the workload requirements. And then perhaps even most exciting is, is Project Capitola and having the VMware hypervisor actually put the data in the right place. So you kind of get the best of both worlds of, you know, it's, it's done not at the user individual application level, but you get those uh, similar type of benefits. So it's really been a, a rich collaboration and our customers really appreciate VMware offering and all of the above approach to the technology. Especially options that uh, take the burden off IT uh, to uh, try and find the, the optimal use of the resources. Uh, anything that saves them time saves the most precious resource. Uh, great, uh, Arvin, thank you. Sudhir, Arvin was talking about how uh, this collaboration between VMware and Intel on tiered memory uh, helps at the sort of the ESX level. Uh, but from a workload perspective, what kinds of benefits uh, are people seeing? Yeah, absolutely. And even before I go into it, uh, let me let me make one, let me add a point to what Drew made earlier, right? Essentially, you know, SAP is able to take care of this tiered memory feature, right? From an Oracle perspective, as, as of now, especially with 21C, the latest release of Oracle, or even with 19C, Yes, we don't have this intelligent tiering or we don't have this automated tiering in place, but you still can pick and choose certain components of the database to be placed in a certain tier of the memory. So you're able to accelerate that component and by that very premise, you're able to accelerate the database. So I just wanted to make that point out there. But yes, from a application perspective, right? And this is very generic to any application, be that SQL, SAP, Oracle, Java, and so on and so forth. What happens is there are two things that are very critical for any application, right? non-volatility and the fact that the latency numbers they come very close to DRAM, right and this is where persistent memory makes its pitch here right so persistent memory or as tmem as we know it has these two key features right so what happens is uh, the persistent memory uh, layer that essentially sits between the nand flash and the dram right that provides faster performance relative to nand flash it provides that non-volatility that you don't find in typical dram offerings right so essentially you're able to marry best of both the worlds here right so this technology, it can be used to accelerate the performance of mission critical, business critical Oracle workloads on VMware VCO platform, right? Using Intel DC Optane PMM in essentially two, uh, two major ways, right? The first way that Drew and Arvind, they spoke about was the app direct uh, way of using it. And essentially even in app direct, there are two ways on a VMware platform that you can consume it, right? The first way is, app direct in a byte addressable mode, which means the persistent memory capacity that is mapped onto the actual physical system address space, right? And then applications sitting within virtual machines on a guest operating system, they can directly access the persistent memory using what's known as the direct load store mechanism, right? Via a persistent memory file system. And that is mounted in what is called a DAX mode, direct addressable mode. So you're not using the SCSI layer, you're not using the block layer of accessing memory. You're essentially using what's called the byte addressable, which is the fastest and the most fastest way of doing it, right? So modern operating systems, RHEL, you know, RHEL, OEL, SUSE, so on and so forth, or modern application, for example, Oracle here, right? 19.12 onwards or 21C, and essentially Oracle 21C, they release a new feature called PMEM file store. And I'll go into it in a, in a, in a couple of seconds they can directly access this persistent memory in a DAX mode using this persistent memory file store. And the best part is it supports the atomic updates of Oracle database blocks in persistent memory. And that's that's a challenge that you get with native PMM. So what happens with native PMM, the unit of granularity that one can read and write is eight bytes, right? And let's assume an Oracle database block size is eight kilobyte. So if you have to write an 8K, you basically would have to write 10, 24 times eight byte persistent memory chunks. And if you have some kind of an issue, let's assume that the power goes off, or let's assume you have some kind of a disruption, right? You end up with what's called tone blocks or fracture blocks. And mm -hmm. this is what applications like Oracle, they came out with and said, hey, you know what? Let's have this persistent memory file store, which is the layer between the persistent memory and the operating system, correct? And when we write to it, we make sure that changes to the blocks are done in an atomic fashion. So that's with the mode, what's the byte addressable mode, 
Now, if we were to rewind back and go back to legacy operating system, right? We go back to let's say legacy applications where they don't have the know-how of persistent memory file system, correct? Or they don't know how to use it in a DAX mode. Yeah. Simply by putting certain components of that application or that operating system on what's known as the PMEM disk or app direct over block. What I'm trying to say here is persistent memory, once it is added to an ESXi server on a VMware platform, right? It comes up with a construct what's called a PMEM data store, right? So it's just another VMFS data store. By putting the VMDKs or the virtual disk or the virtual machine on that data store, you are able to accelerate the components of the virtual machine and by per se, doing it, you are able to accelerate the, uh, the performance of the database. So either you can consume it in what's known as the app direct over block, right? Uh, which is what's called PMM disk or in a byte addressable mode. So that's to do with the app direct mode aspect of it. And uh, uh, Arvind also mentioned what's known as the memory mode, right? So I'll, we'll, we'll come to that later, but essentially back to the app direct mode, we did release a couple of collaterals, right? A couple of use cases talking about oracles with app direct and a couple that comes in my mind is accelerating oracle redo log files or let's say accelerating the oracle what's known as a smart flash cache component by simply using the persistent memory in a byte addressable mode so from your perspective the persistent feature of the tiered memory uh, technology is uh, if not the critical aspect of it then certainly on par with the low latency or the low cost. Um, is that uh, intrinsic to the, the technology generally, or do you have to have uh, 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 cards that are engineered for persistence as opposed to cards that are not? Uh, it, I'll throw that one to you, Drew. Um, yeah, so it really comes down to how you're looking to use it. And I'm a snowboarder, so I'll use a snowboarder analogy, right? So I have, I have young children. When they started uh, skiing and snowboarding, right, you put them on the green trails, right, which are the easy beginner trails, right? It, it's, it's pretty easy. So uh, the traditional letting the hardware do it, you don't have to worry about anything. That's that's the easy way. I think what, uh, what Sadir is talking about is a more advanced way. So think about yeah, at Oracle Database Administrator, they really know their data access patterns and where their bottlenecks is, and, and they're able to take it uh, in advantage of the technology in a more native, more advanced way. You know, in snowboarding, that would be the double black diamond, right? Where you better really know what you're doing. You, you, you're an expert skier or snowboarder, and you're able to, to uh, do the more advanced terrain on a mountain. So I think uh, the, the customers that I've worked with, right, typically they're coming up, you know, hey, let's let the hardware do it initially. Let's start to see the benefits. Let's start to wrap our head around different types of memory uh, and then move to some of these more advanced use cases, particularly as Sadir says, as customers are moving more of these mission critical, you know, perhaps even in memory databases into their virtualized environment, uh, there is uh, definitely an opportunity for tuning to get the maximum performance there. So absolutely. Crawl, walk, run, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, it calls to mind to the, uh, early days of, of personal computing and how, uh, for example, Apple was able to deliver uh, faster graphics performance because they had a lot of the components of their uh, graphics handling built into the ROM component of their operating system. So anything that was pure up, uh, loaded in software off a disk or something uh, was automatically working at a slight handicap uh, with respect to that same kind of performance. Um, so yeah, uh, persistence is, is a huge uh, improvement for uh, various kinds of enterprise workloads. You know, anything from a, a, a paused virtual desktop uh, to, uh, uh, as, as Sudhir was alluding to, uh, databases that are storing persistent data for use uh, in the future, near or far. Um, can we, Sudhir, drill in a little further on uh, benefits specifically to Oracle workloads? I mean, I, I know you were touching on that as uh, examples for some of these things, but you're also highlighting benefits that were kind of uh, broad brush. Uh, and how about Oracle's ability to specifically make use of these features via VMware? Uh, yeah, sure. So I mean, even before we go into that, another point that I'd like to add is not only is the persistent feature of this particular hardware technology important, the fact that the latency is very close to DRAM 
Mm-hmm. That's also very important, right? Because if you look at business critical databases, mission critical databases like Oracle, right? When you have, you know, wait events, right? Essentially like DB file sequential read, DB file scattered read, or let's say a single block wait time, right? That wait time has to be in milliseconds or like close to one millisecond or two millisecond. And the fact that if it now goes beyond a certain you know, length of time, you start seeing these latency creep up all the way to the above layers. And now you have users complaining, hey, why is my application running so slow, right? So that's that's why the fact that it is persistent and the fact that it is the latency are as close uh, as numbers to DRAM, that is like a win-win situation for mission critical databases. So essentially the use cases that we came up with was accelerating certain components of the Oracle database, but and we don't have to go very deep into the Oracle database technology, but any database, the redo log file or the log file is the most important component of the database because the, the way the database works, any general database works, it makes sure that entries are put in the log file before those entries are written into the blocks simply right. for the reason that if you have to, let's say, roll back or let's say if you have to recover the database, right, you're able to do that in a uh, timely fashion and you're able to do that so that everything is, uh, what do I say, contiguous and everything is, you know, uh, consistent at the point of time. That's what I'm looking for, consistent at the point of time, right? So by putting the redo log files of the Oracle database on the persistent memory technology, be that app direct over block or be that app direct uh, directly, you know, the byte in byte addressable mode, what we were able to notice, what we were able to see was the redo log switches were very fast, right? So Oracle database was not waiting for a lot on redo log switches. The redo log switches are very fast. The number of executes per second or the number of transactions per second, which is a metric that any anyone, usually DBS, they measure the performance of the database, that was like doubled or tripled, right? Wow. And in the event of uh, the second use case, which is essentially the smart flash cache. And you know, in a nutshell, think of the smart flash cache as a layer two cache, right? So just like you have uh, on, a, on a server, you have socket, you have cores, you have the L1 cache, the L2 cache, and the L3 cache, right? And then you have the L4 cache, which essentially is the DRAM, if I could call it as an L4 cache. The yep. smart flash cache is another level of cache for the Oracle memory. And any block that falls off the Oracle SG or the memory as we call it, comes and falls onto the smart flash cache. So now Oracle doesn't have to go to disk to read the block. It can go to the smart flash cache, right? So that feature Oracle provided a long, long, long time ago with, uh, I think it was version 10G or 11G, if my memory serves me correct, right? And by putting that component on persistent memory, we were able to see that the IO wait time from a guest operating system level was basically reduced to zero. So it was at 38%. We got it all the way down to zero, and the blogs, and essentially the uh, the blogs has all of the metrics in that. The you know the collaterals have all the metrics in that. But we were able to reduce the DBIO time. We were able to reduce the DB CPU time. Right, the wait times were like this. essentially, uh, I would say uh, you know cut by like a tenth. Right, so case in point being, you are able to accelerate performance of Oracle databases. Right, and I'm sure you can take this analogy and extend that to other databases as well. Right you know, to SQL Server and other databases that's out there, essentially, you know, accelerating the performance of components per se, accelerating the performance of the entire Oracle database workload. So that's more to do with the app direct mode. The second mode that, you know, we kind of briefly touched upon was what's called the memory mode, which is how we can consume persistent memory on a VMware vSphere platform, essentially where the persistent memory, that is the volatile system memory under the control of the VMware platform, right? And any DRAM, in the platform, that will be like the cache for the persistent memory, right? And that acts like the backing cache for any kind of file access, so any other cache hits and so on and so forth. Uh, so what happens is with memory modes, right? Business critical application, right? Huge applications like an SAP, Oracle, in-memory databases, applications with large memory requirements, they are able to consume this memory, which is not easily satisfied by DRAM. And the fact that these memories are cheaper than DRAM, right? So you don't have to go dip into your pockets and go buy this expensive DRAM. Hey, I'm able to get these PMEMs and they have these larger capacities and I'm able to consume that or I'm going to use, I'm able to use that for the Oracle workload. So we are currently, as we are talking right now, we are currently working on the Oracle workloads on the memory uh, mode use case. So stay tuned. We should be, we would be releasing these collaterals pretty soon. And I expect to see, uh, you know, very favorable results for that uh, use case as well. Very exciting. Uh, let me see. So we've touched on a couple of times Project Capitola. Uh, Arvind, what can you tell us about that? What is Project Capitola? Yeah, sure. Um, so 
we uh, like i mentioned we started working on uh, project capitola in uh, very close collaboration with intel uh, in fact our in engineering teams uh, work very closely in this project so basically let me break it up into uh, a, a few pieces so let me state the problem first uh, so Capitola addresses a few core problems. Uh, one is on the density side of things. So uh, like uh, as we see nowadays, that DRAM is very expensive. It's actually 20 to 30% um, of uh, the entire cost of the server. So uh, both density and cost are important factors. So in terms of the cost, uh, we want to see how we can reduce the cost uh, by bringing uh, Intel Optane persistent memory in, uh, um, in a software tiered approach into uh, with Project Capitola. In terms of the density, which is the other problem, uh, we see that DRAM densities are staying pretty constant. Um, I think uh, with respect to CPU cores at least, we don't see a lot of uh, uh, density uh, increase improvements. But Intel Optane brings that additional density. We see, uh, for example, 512 gig densities are common, whereas with DRAM, 32 gig densities are sort of uh, the top uh, marks, uh, mark of uh, how DRAM is used. Now, um, there is also some other tertiary problems uh, which Capitola is trying to solve, which is, you know, in terms of how the tiers are being used, um, there is sort of very little control uh, today in with respect to how DRAM allocations are done or with respect to how, uh, for example, VMs and workloads are consuming these various tiers. Um, for example, you could have rogue VMs actually thrashing the DRAM or we could have resource allocation problems. So Capitola tries to address all of these uh, core issues. Now, uh, let me go to what exactly is Capitola. It's basically you know, a software tiered mechanism. It is completely homegrown. It's uh, uh, completely built into the ESX kernel, into our uh, memory management subsystem. And uh, it basically is completely aware of uh, the various tiers that are present in the, in the system, such as you know, DRAM or persistent memory. And it will try to utilize the various tiers in the most effective manner. Um, and um, it uses a lot of heuristics to make those decisions. Um, there, are, there are a few differences or new changes that also it, this also brings, uh, right? Which is, um, first of all, this, um, which, I, which I think is important to point out. This is not caching in the sense that um, uh, ESX is completely aware of the DRAM and uh, persistent memory as, as separate components. And uh, basically what customers get is um, a sum total of both DRAM and persistent memory, um, which means that you know at any time, ESX is aware of how uh, it should be uh, swapping, for example, the pages that workloads are using, the memory pages between DRAM and persistent memory. So, what it brings is, a, um, while it brings a complete transparency, it also brings more efficiency and uh, better latencies. And um, uh, the other difference I want to point out is, you know, ESX controls both the hypervisor and resource allocations. So this makes it more workload aware, uh, which means that situations like noisy neighbors or, uh, you know, some of the rogue VM or starvation issues can be avoided. And uh, ESX at all times knows uh, to give a fair share to all the VM workloads. Um, so you're mm -hmm. saying that uh, transparent to the workloads, uh, yeah. the hypervisor will be able to deliver to them some of the accelerational benefits of using the tiered memory or, or the, the new tier of memory uh, and also um, more availability of memory resources. Basically, each VM can have access to more memory now that this tier of less expensive but still pretty performant uh, uh, hardware is available to it. Uh, that in the nutshell? That's exactly right, uh, right. John. 
what we are doing is you know we um, since we have this control uh, from a hypervisor point of view about uh, how memory is being utilized uh, we we can make granular decisions on how uh, these vms can be allocated uh, um, for example when when it's required uh, and if it's required they can actually get access to dram which is the fastest tier and then you know for the slower tiers we can always go down to uh, persistent memory or other uh, other hardware technologies um so the other um, important thing i want to mention uh, with what we are doing with project capitola is since uh, the benefit is that it's part of the kernel which means that you know um everything all the other product lines in in vmware such as vsan or vcf or even uh, the hyperscalers um, with our VMC uh, product line, they can make use of this intelligent software-based tiering approach. And that's the big benefit then that, that Capitola is going to bring to the picture in addition to everything that Sudhir was telling us about uh, is that any workload will benefit. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, that was, I was going to talk about the workloads so um, next, which 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 means that you know, with Capitola we are um, again you know this is the crawl walk run approach. Uh, we want to lead with VDI and VM consolidation, which are sort of the primary uh, workloads that you know a lot of our majority of our customers um, are looking to consolidate, um, uh, do more with fewer servers, for example, or. Uh, use more or scale up on the same server. So Capitola fits into uh, that and we are initially targeting that. But um, definitely doesn't mean that traditional applications like Oracle cannot make use of this. I mean, we, we are seeing some, um, uh, we are jointly doing some experiments with Intel and uh, we are also working with some OEMs as well as um, with some of the experiments that Sudhir uh, is doing with Oracle, we are seeing that this could become a general purpose uh, kind of feature that can help a wide range of applications rather than just a, a few targeted workloads. Well, it makes me wonder too, if uh, some of those workloads out there that have persistently wanted to run on bare metal to get every last ounce of available resource might find that they can now take advantage of the benefits of virtualization because the virtualization layer can actually give them performance uh, in excess of what they've been getting in the past. Absolutely, John. I think uh, that's uh, that's our goal. Uh, that has been the goal across you know all the hardware innovations that we do. And uh, memory was sort of you know one of the uh, final frontiers for us and. Uh, we are very happy that um, we are able to collaborate and we are able to bring this memory innovation uh, with Project Capitola. In, in fact, our vision is to in eventually see Capitola as something that can help you know, multiple servers across a cluster. And uh, um, recently, we also see a lot of uh, um, startups and other um, server vendors coming up with uh, disaggregation and composability and uh, you know sort of using hardware resources in a pooled kind of uh, fashion and capitola uh, definitely is trending towards uh, such a environment where you could actually use memory across hosts of the same cluster and you you have like a really good view of uh, when and how uh, these resources can be used. Plus, um, the DRS capabilities that uh, we have already helps with sort of fine tuning and balancing the workloads um, between the different hosts. Uh, so some of the technologies we are seeing, um, such as you know CXL, uh, we are looking into CXL. We are also looking into uh, CXL attached. Uh, technologies, NVMe is another technology. So definitely, um, Intel Optane is uh, is um, uh, will always be in the picture with um, you know as as a sort of uh, a primary tier for us. Uh, but it could also become a sort of networked kind of uh, tiering where we use CXL uh, kind of mechanisms to actually tier across uh, the host or outside of the server. 
Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and really, thanks to each of you for the, the depth and the, the breadth of the insights that you've offered up to us today. Um, let's wrap up uh, by sharing what each of you thinks the future may look like with regards to memory and what businesses should be ready for. Uh, Drew, we'll start with you. No, yeah, I think Arvin did a great job of, of teasing the future, right? So if you think about memory, we've lived in a world where the technology uh, invented before the first person landed on the moon, you can get it uh, from three primary vendors in, in the universe. And so I think what Arvind is painting is it's about to look, memory is about to look a lot more like storage where you've got a lot of different technologies from a lot of different vendors connected in different ways. And I think you know, just getting used to this idea of memory tiering and some of the things we've run over today is that great first step. Get comfortable, crawl, walk, run, uh, because it's going to be, you fast forward two or three years from now, it's going to be the Wild West. There's going to be a lot of choices. So really the time uh, is to start is now. Get familiar with it. Take advantage of the benefits there are today and set the stage uh, for things like Project Capitola, which will take those uh, take those advances and, and really take them to the next level or, or the final frontier. I'm going to use that, Arvind. I like uh, I like that terminology. It sounds like an old science fiction uh, show I used to watch. So memory, the final frontier. Uh, Sudhir, you want to chime in? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you look at the, I mean, given the fact that data, right, enterprise data, that's constantly growing, you know, there's a need for enterprises to provide resiliency, right? They have to provide performance. The fact that they have to ensure that day-to-day -day operations, they are seamlessly, you know, uh, operated without any kind of breach in the SLAs, right? And given the fact that the real-time processing of that data, that's the need of the hour as of today, right? So hardware and platform accelerators like Intel tiered memory or, you know, pro uh, VMware Project Capital and VMware Project Capital, that helps provide business critical application, mission critical application with performance accelerators. They ensure that we are able to meet the business SLAs and essentially we are able to help business get insight into the data for all of their, you know, all of the forecasting, right? All of their business needs. So I think this is a great proposition. And I'll quickly add on to the take on Project Capital from a workload perspective. Arvin made a very important point. He used the word transparent, right? And that's the key to it, right? See, what happens is from an application perspective, there's nothing special one has to do when one provisions a virtual machine with a workload like Oracle and essentially leaves it to VMware to decide where the hot blocks is going to reside, where the warm and the cold blocks are going to migrate, right? Essentially, given giving VMware that throttle, that lever to transmigrate those blocks from the hot to the warm to the cold tier and back onto the hot tier. So, I mean, this is exciting. I mean, this is exciting that the workloads are essentially able to, uh, you know, make use of the different tiers of memory and the fact that VMware is able to provide those kind of throttles and levers to do the magic under the covers, you know, without really affecting the applications or any kind of uh, disruption to their operations. Fantastic. And Arvind? Yeah, I think uh, I agree with both uh, Drew and Sudhir. Uh, I think uh, we, uh, as VMware, we are definitely trending towards uh, taking advantage of uh, all the hardware innovations that are happening. And um, with Project Capitola, uh, we are helping that uh, customers that much in terms of providing, uh, you know, a very flat kind of transparent address space uh, without them having to worry operationally about using um, these tiers for their applications. Um, so definitely with uh, PMM and uh, Project Capitola, we are uh, helping customers in their journey towards uh, some of the increased amount of data processing and uh, digital uh, transformation journey uh, for both you know, on-prem or um, or even cloud service providers uh, by uh, helping them increase their hardware utilization and uh, providing the best performance. I, I have to say that the density features alone are, are very exciting. Uh, for my part, I'm just going to say that all the technologies that we do research on for enterprises, uh, all the emerging technologies they're most excited about, whether it's AR and VR uh, or new collaboration tools or uh, various kinds of IoT uh, management and security, all of them are always more data hungry. And anything that not only gives them access to more data, but gives them access to more data at memory speed um, is a good thing. 
And so I think it's all going to be very exciting as it becomes much more broadly deployed. And with that, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all three of you again for your time and your insights and thank everybody who has taken the time to listen to us talking today. We hope that you found this very helpful. Do please join us for episode three in the series on combining tiered memory and Dell VX Rail platforms to support application modernization. For now, goodbye from us.